Back to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're cooking old school. See we got our open fire here and we're cooking on a good old number 12 Dutch oven. Gonna do uh, some pinto beans. A little bit of uh, hog jaw in there. As you see it's a very simple setup here. Just got a piece of rebar hanging a pot up there with a the fire. Been running this for a while. Got a little coals going in there. So it's a good uh, skill to know here, you know, every time kind of a power outage or hurricane or whatever, you've got no propane, no electricity. Doesn't mean you can't do a really good hearty meal for you and your family. So, we're getting a hog jaw, um, ground off here. Getting ready to put in our other ingredients, which are very simple. I think that's important. That's a lost skill. I'd love to bring back to, and uh, teach people that it's not necessary to have all the modern conveniences that we have today to actually cook food for yourself. Right, folks, next thing to go in here, we got some uh, sliced cubanello peppers, green onions, and a little bit of cabbage. Trying to use cabbage from the garden there. So I'm put them in there, soften them up a little bit. All right, those are softened up. We're gonna just walk right over here, right next door. Hey, let's just grab a little piece of basil right there. I don't think you can get too much fresher than that. We'll grab these last few uh, remaining little pieces. Let's walk them back over here. I'm gonna crush them in my hand a little bit to release the oils and throw them in there. All right. The next thing to come is our beans. We already soaked those. The short method. An hour. We got a little cumin on them, and we got our uh, ham ham uh, juice right there. That's gonna go in there next. You see that you can easily cook a great meal without any kind of electricity, propane, gas, or any of that kind of thing. All you need is a, a few chunks of charcoal or uh, like we used today, some hardwood, you know, some good old hardwood we uh, harvested ourselves, and a little bit of time. There we go, the other two, those veggies are all getting going there. We'll dump our beans in there. All of them in there. And then we're going to pour this ham stock on it. You can see that. Doesn't take long to come back to a bowl. We we'll probably put a little bit more water in there and I'll cap them off and let them sit. All right, well, I want to show you a little bit about tending this fire. Trick to this is use small pieces. You see here we got maybe a four or five inch long piece of split oak. And we're just going to add them um, slowly between those two larger pieces. Those are keeping a nice coal going down there. You don't want to get so far it burns out or you're going to have a hard time getting it going again. So about every 15-20 minutes we'll have to put another chunk in there. We'll just slide them in there as we go. We just want to keep it as a simmer. Of course this big old uh, Dutch oven number 12 here. This one's a lodge. It does very well at maintaining heat. We're trying to reteach people how to use the old skills that have been lost and not passed down through the generation. How to use a real wood fire anywhere you happen to be. It, you, you're not going to go too many places in this country where there's not going to be. Check on her real quick. Make sure she's up to this hammer. She's looking pretty good. That heat will even out after a while. 
So I'm just going to let her stay on there for a while. At least an hour. If you don't have one of these little numbers for your lodge Dutch oven, I highly recommend it. It makes it very easy to get your lid off and on. Right, it's been about an hour, so we're going to come over here and we pull the lid off of it. You still see she's simmering right away there. It's going to let this reduce down a little bit. Um, concentrate those good juices. We did open her up a little while ago and put a little fresh Mexican cilantro in it. So we want these to be like a ranch style bean. So we'll give us a few minutes of that reduced and then uh, be time to eat. Right, we took them beans off. Now we're going to take our other good old lodge skillet. We're going to finish up with our sides here. It's going to break them coals down just a little bit. I'm going to set that skillet right on top of them. And it won't take long. That'll be ready to cook. And then we'll put our bread on her here. We'll toast our bread. We just uh, dip that in a little bit of uh, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And we're going to toast that off in the, the good old art, uh, lodge here. Again, no uh, electricity gas needed. Got plenty of fire up under there. Plenty of heat left. And these iron skillets are a must have for backwoods cooking. But you can cook really good food without all these modern conveniences okay uh, just like today's uh, episode we're going to be cooking on a dutch oven and an old iron skillet and a little bit of hardwood uh, wood there and believe me the results are better than you're going to find just about any restaurant in america yeah Oh, I agree you're not going to be able to eat in 30 seconds like people have gotten used to. But it connects people back to right, what they're eating. Here we go. Pan's warmed up there. That only, only took about five minutes. Pan's nice and hot. So we're just going to go ahead and lay them. Our pieces of bread that have been oiled. I'm just going to go ahead and lay them in there. Right here, it's pretty hot already. This will go great with our... Uh, with our uh, camp beans we just made there, ranch beans. So this will only take a few minutes just since that pan is sitting right on them coals. Sitting right on them. That's what you want for a nice hot skillet. This will literally take just a few minutes. Pan's plenty hot, almost too hot. We just uh, lift it off. We set over here to the side. There's plenty of heat in that pan to finish um, toasting our pieces of bread. You can see right there, else almost perfect. You know, getting nice and toasty. It's basically, uh, you know, camp bread here. You can also use uh, bacon grease. Makes this even better. Here today we use olive oil. I'm trying to be a little healthier. All right, folks. We're going to go ahead and plate this up, and we'll show you how we got our toast. We got our beans. Got a plate in a bowl. Alright, first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a piece of the toast. We got a couple of sliced fresh tomatoes right out of the garden here. Just a little bit of kosher salt on them. Go ahead and put a couple tomatoes on on the bread there. Get another one. Come in there. Gonna make it look nice. Okay. Put another one there. A couple more tomatoes with the kosher salt on them. This is really, really good. So, you arrange them real nice there. And then we're going to go ahead and take a bowl. We got a little bit of fresh kale from the garden there on it, which is really good with this also. If you can see that, you know, you got pieces of the hog jaw on that. It's not a lot of liquid. You got the onions, green onions, the cabbage, all just uh, glistening there. So we're going to put that on the plate along with the camp bread. And that is a beautiful meal. You know, just like we're here, we, we grow about 85-90% uh, of everything we eat as far as, uh, at least for as far as vegetables go. So, I mean... Um, when you get that kind of satisfaction from eating something you grew yourself 
or preparing it like we did today over a, you know, a real wood fire and taking the time to slow down and, you know, uh, really appreciate it. It does give you a, a lot more sense of satisfaction and a little and a little bit of pride. And I think that's uh, again, like I said before, worth the effort.